Hi, my name is Flint, and today we're going to be talking about Guild War Tactics. I've been playing Knighthood for well over a year now. I'm a co-leader in my guild, Cerberus, and we've had some pretty decent success in the last two wars that have taken place so far. We took first place during the first war, and we finished second in the second one by only a couple hundred points. We almost took first. I haven't played the game as long as some of the others in my guild, and I don't consider myself the most advanced knight in the game, but I do feel that I have some information that would be good to clarify for the other knights at large, in particular guild leaders who are looking for a little bit more information. Namely, I feel that in the last two guild wars, I have seen some guilds struggle with making progress and their ability to stay competitive over the course of the war. We're going to touch on a couple of different points today, but first we're going to start off with the basics. What is a guild war? A guild war is a game mode where four different guilds go head to head in a territorial land grab battle where each guild attempts to capture as many nodes as possible and defend them from being overtaken by rival guilds. Points, called glory, are accrued at the end of each day based on how many nodes and what type of nodes each guild has. Not every node is created equal though. Let's talk about these different types of nodes. As you can see here, we are in the middle of a war. And on this war map are a bunch of nodes that are already taken over. They're split up between different guilds. It might be kind of confusing at first, but you can anchor yourself by looking here to this tower in the middle of this lake right in the center of the map. It's not able to be taken, and it's a very important landmark because to its north, east, south, and west, there are very special nodes. Starting off to the south here, we have Southwell Ford, aptly named, has this tower, and you can tell it by this icon here that that is that type of node. To the east, we have Blue Goat Rock, also identified by the same tower node. To the north, we have Tollwood Hill, also kind of hidden here behind the symbol, but is that same tower still. And to the west, we have Lowhurst Moor, that same tower. Those are the only four towers on the map and should be very high priorities for you and your guild. Next to each tower, though, are fortresses, such as to the north, we have South Moss Moor, obviously a fortress out on the map. Uh, over here, off to the west, we have Wild Farm Hold, which is the fortress next to uh, the Lowhurst Moor Tower. To the south, we have uh, Lightwash Shield, which is the fortress right next to the tower to the south. Southwell, obviously. And to the east, we have Low Water Hold, which is the fortress right next to the Blue Goat Rock Tower. Now, let's talk about fortresses and towers for just a second. The tower nodes, such as Blue Goat Rock here, all offer the exact same rewards. Upon takeover of the node, you get 100 glory points. Upon holding the node for three hours, you get another 100 glory points. Now, holding as many of these towers as possible and ensuring that you have a constant flow of glory points is the number one tactic in which you and your guild can ensure victory. And if your guild controls this node at the reset period of the war day, you also get 10 legendary shard chests, making this node very valuable for you and your guild. These should be prioritized above all others. Number two priority on our list today are the fortresses right next to these towers. Next to Blue Goat, we have Low Water Hold. And at Low Water Hold, if you click on the reward section over here, you'll see that for takeover, you get 300 glory points, which is quite a bit more than you got for the tower. And for controlling this node at the end of the day reset, you get another 300 control points. All in all, a very sweet deal. However, it is not the same as getting 100 points every three hours and is very worth having, but is not as lucrative as holding onto the towers. There are other types of nodes, however, aside from just our towers and our fortresses, such as Night Tree Creek here, which is just a crossroads. We have these other versions of these and these towns like Blue Tor Pass. And these towns offer uh, orders, which we haven't talked about yet. Orders are your action points on the war map. If you want to take over a node, it takes an order. If you want to defend a node, it takes an order. If you want to do PvP and attack a defender on a node, it takes an order. If you don't have orders, you can't do anything. So when you come across the four towns on the map and you get a free order for attacking it, it's essentially a free spot on the map. However, there are also quarries uh, that give you gems. And then again, these normal nodes that don't really offer anything, but if you go to rewards, they do give you some glory points and they also give you a potion or another kind of basic item, such as uh, an equipment a chest or a gold chest or maybe even a customization chest or some guild accolades. Those are all of your crossroads or just normal 
middle of the road nodes that are not very high value. They are worth having because every single node is going to give you 100 glory points at the end of your war, and they are definitely worth having. The more nodes that you have, the more points you get. Therefore, having all of them is good, but some are more valuable than others. So maybe don't prioritize getting the middle of the road or crossroad nodes, but instead go for the towers, go for the fortresses, go for the towns, and then go for your mines. Another quick point about the lines that connect each one of these nodes that I wanted to make is that saw lines show a line and a road between two nodes that you control. A dotted line is a node that you don't control and a node that you control. And then the gray lines in the farther distance are the nodes that you can't reach because you haven't expanded your territory out to reach that point yet. You can only reach out and potentially battle or overthrow uh, nodes that have uh, an adjoining node of your own. A quick note to point out about that is behind each one of the guild headquarters are three nodes that cannot be captured or taken by anybody that is not inside of that guild. So there is no point in putting defenders or fortifying the nodes behind a guild if no one can get there. Your headquarters, your chain node that you can see there for medics and for Cerberus, cannot be taken. AE Maps, the same people who bring you help for the rifts each week, made a very handy Guild Wars map. Each one of these nodes corresponds with a generalized location on the Guild War map to show you where you should be looking for each one of these things. The blank center in the middle is the island that we were talking about earlier in this video, and you can see that there are the towers and the fortresses right next to each other, and each one of the other types on there as well. You can see that there are four cities or towns, you can see that there are four gem mines, there are four gold mines, there are four of most types of nodes if they are specialized and not just road or crossroad nodes. But this map shows you all of the rewards you can get out of all of them. This map has been very useful for me and my guild in communicating what nodes need to be taken or which nodes are in danger when we don't have all of the names totally memorized and we can instead go through this list and find out where each of our friends are and where the th threats are as well. The last two things that I wanted to touch on here are about defenders and fortification. Uh, we talked about defenders a little bit while talking about orders, but we didn't talk about a fortification at all. Some of these nodes are lumber nodes, and or lumber mills, and there are of course four of them as we just talked about, and they give you 25 logs uh, to, that you can use to reinforce um, your nodes. Any node that is reinforced gives you a percent bonus to how much damage you do, such as that 25% here, or if we go over here to... Uh, this one has 625% damage increase because it's been fortified 25 times, giving the defenders there a significant bonus. Defenders are guild members who have been put on that node to defend it from being taken by an enemy. So any potential enemy uh, who comes along trying to overthrow that node will have to go through all the defenders first. However many defenders are on a node is how many orders it will take to have that node taken afterwards. So it is very, very useful to have all of your guild members stack onto nodes that are very important. It is more often than not, not worth spreading your defenders out across various nodes or even worth fortifying smaller nodes. It is worth stacking all of your resources into one or two choke points or one or two really high value targets such as your towers and your fortresses. If you have your entire guild inside of one single node, it'll be very difficult for an enemy to take that out, especially if it's been fortified up a lot. So consider stacking all of your uh, fortifications and all of your um, defenders in strategic spots and communicate where those positions are most needed. And that about wraps us up. I know we covered quite a bit here. This is a nine minute long video now, uh, but we talked about towers and fortresses being our top most priorities. Uh, we talked about the other various types of nodes, talked about orders, talked about defenders, talked about fortresses, and stacking your resources instead of spreading yourself way too thin. Um, these are all just kind of the basic ideas that have led me and my guild and co-leaders to success, and I hope that potentially this helped uh, shed some light on how Guild Wars work and helped you. And if it did, uh, feel free to share this, and if not, then thanks for watching anyway. Best of luck to you and your guild, and may the best one win.